So I, I think most people know about the black box generic battery that you go buy at the discount store. It just has liquid in it and it's got the caps on the top that yeah. you, you can open them up and see water inside. But then there's other types of lead acid batteries like a gel and an AGM, so the absorb glass mat. So what's the difference really as you go between those three? Okay. Well, if, if, you, if you take a look at a, a traditional black box wet battery, uh, one thing we talked about is it's open to the atmosphere. Uh, whereas the gel and the AGM uh, uh, batteries like Optima are sealed. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a, a safety vent uh, so that if there is an overcharge situation, they can vent gas to the outside. That vent reseals, so it doesn't necessarily mean the battery is no good after it vents. It's still, it's still usable. Uh, with, a, with a wet battery, if you get into an overcharge situation, you're going to break down the water in the electrolyte, and then that's just gonna, uh, that gas that's generated is allowed to dissipate into the atmosphere. So in uh, severe overcharging situations, or overcharging in general, you, you're typically losing water out of your system. Uh, which in, in some cases with a wet battery, if you can add water, uh, you can always replenish it, but it's a maintenance uh, uh, issue then. Mm -hmm. Something that you have to keep, keep, uh, constantly keep track of. Uh, and a lot of batteries these days uh, are not made to be water. Uh, they're wet batteries that are not uh, user serviceable. Uh, and they, they do that by uh, a combination of uh, the alloy construction. But in any event, if you start losing water in a, in a wet battery, a uh, sealed wet battery, it's, it's going to be an end-of-life issue, premature end-of-life issue. The AGM and the gel, they're sealed. Uh, AGM has a lot of advantages over a gel uh, in terms of the forgiveness over the recharge uh, voltage range allowed, uh, which gel batteries are more sensitive. So you don't really want to charge an AGM battery using a gel battery setting. Even if your charger says gel or AGM, uh, you really want to use a, a charger that's just a straight AGM design charger. Uh, many of the new chargers that are coming out these days are designed to, uh, to have specific algorithms that will charge uh, an AGM battery or a wet battery. Uh, some with a selectable switch, some are uh, pretty much uh, user independent, but they have uh, charging algorithms that allow them to function both reasonably well with both a wet and a, an AGM design. But if you have the opportunity to buy a charger that has a specific AGM only setting on it, and you're gonna have a battery like an Optima AGM battery, that's the best route to go. So one of the things I didn't know about AGM is that you can deplete them to a very low level, to you know, six, eight volts. You know, ideally, it's not ideal, but you can yeah. deplete them to that level. But most chargers, you were talking about the charger piece, yeah. most chargers can't initiate at the six to eight volt yeah. setting, which is why you were saying you need that special type of charger. Or there's other workarounds, which you have on your website, where you can daisy chain it with another battery and get it up to the 12 volts. Right. Uh, at one time, chargers were designed so that if the 12 volt battery voltage was below about six or seven volts, they wouldn't activate because they felt the, charge, uh, the battery had a short in it. Uh, the chargers that Optima has tested in the last five years all seem to activate uh, at very low voltages, even voltages as low as uh, 0.1 volt. So that, that, that issue is pretty much disappearing uh, for a deeply discharged AGM battery that's uh, difficult to charge on a, an older conventional charger. New chargers seem to have overcome that. Okay, so issue. if the design was made in the last five years, you're probably okay. To... Yeah, it, probably the last five to seven years. Uh, chargers that have come out since then uh, seem to have taken this uh, consumer uh, feedback to heart, and they're they're designed such now that they will activate at those very low voltages. Uh, and again, if you can find a charger that has a specific setting for AGM batteries and a specific setting for wet batteries. That's really the better route to go because then you know that they've taken into consideration right. the design changes between a wet and an AGM and possibly a gel battery. They may even have a third setting. Uh, we do not necessarily recommend one that is a catch-all that supposedly will do all battery types with the same uh, charge algorithm. Uh, it might be able to do that, but it won't be able to do that necessarily to the best extent for each individual type of chemistry. So one of the most important things I think for our users is runtime with their with their car computer or their in-vehicle electronics. And you were mentioning to me in SAE standard that the voltage really shouldn't drop below 10.2 in your battery, and that's really like the safe number. If you if you and so you could basically like set your shutoff time at 10.2 as opposed to 11 or 12 volts with an AGM. Yeah, uh, actually it's it's 10 and a half volts. Okay. 
and it's a it's a generic standard right now that SE has for lead acid batteries. Okay. So uh, a wet lead acid, a gel a lead acid, or an AGM lead acid, okay. all would use that same ten and a half volt cutoff. Uh, the uh, and, and that's typically for currents of twenty five amps or below. Okay. If you're going up to higher currents, fifty amps, a hundred amps. Uh, then you can drop that cutoff voltage okay. because the internal resistance of the battery has a contribution to the, the, the initial voltage drop. So, and that contribution is higher at 100 amps or 200 amps than it is at 25 amps. Mm -hmm. So, under those circumstances, you kind of depress the entire shutoff curve downward right. to a lower voltage. Uh, the one thing about all lead acid batteries is they like to be recharged as soon as they're discharged. Right. Uh, for including long, AGMs, including AGMs. Yeah, yeah. All that acid batteries, yeah. and wet gel or AGM. Yeah. Uh, if you discharge them, it's it, they like it best in terms of uh, life. Yeah. If they be, if they're recharged in a reasonable period of time. So using your yellow top and red top batteries, if you have a standard car like four or six cylinder car, what voltage would you want to ideally tell your circuit? If you were gonna like leave your car parked for a long time, but you want to leave your electronics running yeah. for some reason, what would be the ideal voltage that you would tell your electronics to shut off at? And still be able to start your car when you come back to it? Well, that's a good question because you always have to have enough residual energy content to crank the engine to start, right. start the engine up. Uh, you know, if you look at uh, the uh, voltage versus state of charge curve for an Optima, once you get down to the, you know, about 11.5 volt range, just on, on open circuit, okay. uh, that's pretty much a completely discharged battery. Okay. The 10 and a half volts we're referring to is for a voltage under low. Okay. So you remember you have that initial uh, resistance contribution to the voltage drop. Mm -hmm. So if you took the open circuit voltage and subtracted off what that uh, uh, voltage drop contribution would be, then you end up with the 10 and a half volts for the quote standard end of discharge. But for just an open circuit voltage for a battery that's sitting there maybe supporting a, a key offload for a computer or something yeah. like that, uh, you have to have enough energy content left to uh, start the engine. And, and typically that's going to be somewhere between 25 and 50 percent state of charge okay on the battery okay so that that's going to get you up into the maybe 12 1 12.2 volt range okay for that's the good open to know. circuit yeah great well thanks a lot for the battery 101 we appreciate all your time my pleasure